So now let's go back to the original 2x2 two two design that we started with with this example here. And let's use it to identify more specifically the different types of effects that we can investigate with any factorial design. If we take the values that we might read off of the graph on the right and place those in the box on the left, then what we can see are, let's say these are the averages for the individuals that are in each of these groups. So for example, the females who perform the mental rotation task on average achieved 67% accuracy. The females who did the object memory task achieved on average 85% accuracy. And similarly for the males, 79 and 71% accuracy across the two tasks. Well now these are the performance of each of these four individual groups. But if we want to look at some of the different effects that we talked about before, then we can also think about not just these individual group averages, but we can think about averages across entire levels of the variables that are involved. So for example, look at just the two different tasks, mental rotation on the left and object memory on the right. If we want to compare the different tasks, and we don't really care about gender, okay, so we don't really care whether the males or the females are involved, then we can really think about that as not, say, 10 males and 10 females each doing this mental rotation task, but as just 20 individuals who have done the mental rotation task on the left. Well, then we can think about the average across these 20 individuals, not thinking about it separately by each gender. If we do that, then let's put those means underneath the, the individual columns that they represent. And if we do that, let's say that we take the average of 79 and 67 becomes an average of 73 on the mental rotation task. And averaging 85 and 71 produces an average of 78 on the object memory task. Okay. These then are going to represent the group means, or the averages, or what are also often called the marginal means, for just the two different tasks, regardless of which gender. Now similarly, what we can do is to look at the scores for the males and the females collapsed across the different tasks. So in other words, how well did the males do overall on these cognitive tasks? Regardless of whether they did mental rotation or object memory, on average, if we again say that we have 10 individuals in each cell, so we also have 10 males and 10 females doing the object memory task, then if what we care about is just how well did these 20 males do on average, and how well did the 20 females do on average, we can look at those group or marginal means as well. Averaging 79 and 71 gives us a male average of 75. Averaging the female scores of 67 and 85 across the tasks produces a female overall average of 76. Well, now we have enough information to test the different types of effects that we mentioned before. Okay, so if we have this 2 by 2 design, and if we have the performance of each individual group, and then we also have our marginal means shown off to the sides here, then we can think about exactly how to test the different types of hypotheses that are possible. So finally we can think about addressing all of the different types of questions or different types of effects that are going to be possible in this type of a design. We might have a hypothesis that men and women perform differently. Well, in this situation, what do we really care about? We really don't care about what task these men and these women are performing. And we don't really care whether it's the mental rotation or object memory task in which they're engaged. All we care about is comparing men and women and whether or not their performance differs. Well, if that's the case, then we don't really care about the individual group means there. All we want to compare is the males versus the females, the top versus the bottom row, the 76 versus the 75. This would be the main effect of gender, because we're interested in one variable or factor, gender, regardless of the level of the other variable, task. Similarly, we might have a hypothesis just about the tasks, whether or not one type of task is more difficult than the other, regardless of whether it's males or females performing the task. So across people, do people perform differently depending on the task? Is the mental rotation or the object memory task more difficult? In this case, we would be comparing the marginal means across the two different columns in our table what we would call a main effect of task. Now there's other effects that we can look at as well. In particular, think about the following hypothesis, that men and women perform differently on just the mental rotation task. 
Again, notice how this is different than the main effect of gender, which is comparing all of the males and the females that participated in our study, regardless of the task they're doing. This is saying now, just for the mental rotation task, is there an effect, or is there a difference between the males and the females? In this case, what we would be comparing is not the marginal means at all, but the group means for those two specific groups that are involved in this comparison, the 67 to the 79 percent. This is what we would refer to as a simple effect. It's an effect of one entire variable, gender, at just one level of the other variable, that is, for just the mental rotation task. Now, similarly, we could look at, say, the simple effect of gender for just the object memory task. This would be testing the hypothesis that men and women perform differently on the object memory task. Now, it's going to get complicated if we put all the simple effects up here, but we could also look at the simple effect of task for just one gender. In other words, looking just at the females, do they perform differently depending on the type of task. This would be looking at just the top row in the table here. Again, I'm not going to put all these up because it's going to get cluttered, but you should be aware that you're able to look at simple effects for each level of each factor. Now, the next type of effect that is going to be very important is going to be able to understand how to look at the interaction effect that type of hypothesis is going to say that, for example, men and women perform differently depending on the task, or the gender difference differs between tasks. In other words, the difference between males and females for one task is different than the difference between males and females on another task. What we're looking at here is essentially then comparing two simple effects. So if you look at the simple effect on the left, the blue arrow looking at comparing males and females on the mental rotation task. And then we have another simple effect comparing males and females on just the object memory task. One way to think about an interaction is comparing those two simple effects. If those two simple effects are the same, then there would be no interaction because the effect of moving from female to male is the same for both tasks. That means there is no combination effect going on between our genders. There might be an effect of gender, but it's the same regardless of what task they're doing. That would mean there is no interaction. But if these two simple effects are different, that then would be looking at the interaction effect. Okay, we would label this a gender by task interaction, meaning that the effect of gender depends on the type of task that you're given. Or accuracy across the different tasks is different for the different genders that are involved in the study. Now this concludes the basic introduction to these different types of concepts, in particular to a factorial design, to the different types of groupings you can do in a factorial design, looking just within one specific cell or box of our table, or whether we're looking at an entire group such as the males as a whole, the females as a whole, or one specific task, that is, our marginal means that are off to the side. And by understanding these different types of effects, then you should be able to think about when you're developing your project in your study, how you might be able to think of some of these different effects as well. What are your hypotheses going to be for the possible main effects in your study? What about the possible interaction between the two variables or more in your study? What about simple effects? Are those going to be interesting or important to consider in your specific study? Okay. And again, what we're going to do is some in-class exercises to further get some practice identifying these different types of effects, generating these different types of effects, and being able to just look at a graph and identify whether or not these different types of effects indeed occur. Now, in fact, that concludes this lecture. And there isn't a quiz to take at this point in time. That is, if you guys are watching this before Monday, as you're supposed to, okay? So the quiz won't be due, but I do want you guys, hopefully, to have a good general understanding of these concepts, or at least have it facilitated enough that you're able to identify the types of questions that are going to need to be addressed in class for you to fully understand this concept as well.